Champions Outlawed. The Marvel event so memorable, I forgot I bought the book. So now I've bought it twice. Touché, Marvel. Touché. I made a video about this event a while ago. It's basically Civil War, but if it only applied to kids. Yes, I know that sounds redundant because that's kind of what set off Marvel's Civil War to begin with. And yes, I know it makes no sense because so many of Marvel's characters began as teenagers and they wouldn't have any reason to support blocking teen heroes. And yes, since this is already an Anne Rice long run on sentence, I know this is the 58th event Marvel's put out this year that no one cares about. But I'm still going to talk about it because I bought this book twice. And even though I like the art, I still want my money back. So here we go. Let's get the good part out of the way. The art for the Outlawed book was done by Kim Jacinto, and the Champions art was done by Simone DeMeo in the first issue, with Bob Quinn helping in the second. I really enjoyed Jacinto's art. It's got the right blend of detail, caricature, and kinetic flow that just pulls you in. Jacinto has a way with expressions, so no one looks boring or plain or too similar. But where Jacinto really nails it is in the action scenes. Just drink this in. You don't need sound effects here. You can hear them yourself. Everything's fluid and moving and dynamic. If you're looking to compete with manga art, this is what you want to do. There's so many cool little delicacies, Steve Vai would say, all over the page. All this little attention to detail just makes this a joy to look at. Simone DeMeo's art is fantastic as well, but it's just not my thing. DeMeo picks really cool angles for the action panels and has great detailing for the backgrounds. It's just that visually I don't find the style very interesting. It's not enough to make me drop a book, but it wouldn't make me buy it either. It's absolutely solid work, it's just not for me. Now, this entire event seems to have come from Eve Ewing. Watchers may remember Eve got her job in Marvel because someone created a change.org petition to have her write Riri Williams because Eve looks like the character. And Marvel said, why not? It's not like we're looking for someone who wants to work for us. In fact, we care so little that we're going to take two talented artists and bury them on a series no one will buy. What could go wrong? Everybody expected Eve to bomb, and she proved us wrong. Initially. Ironheart turned out okay. It had a rocky start, but eventually Eve found her groove, which is in neutral. It's like someone put a super compressor on a work so that everything just gets crunched down to mediocrity. She's really good with dialogue, but outside of that her stories have gone a whole lot of nowhere. I don't know if that's from Marvel holding her back or just proof that comics really aren't her thing, but Ironheart and now Champions have moved into Never Was rent free. The whole premise of the story is just bad. The champions get into a fight near a school, and there's some youth activists there, and when Viv Vision tries to stop the dragon, two of the other champions launch an attack that results in the dragon combining with Viv, and when the team takes her down, the school is damaged and Kamala Khan saves the activist, but gets injured. This results in a congressional hearing where it's decided that there will be a new law put in place, called Kamala's Law, that bars anyone under 21 from being a vigilante superhero, even though technically being a vigilante is already illegal. Like I mentioned in my video about this when it was announced, all of this was handled in Civil War. Heroes are constantly fighting, and they destroy things when they do. The idea that this would be the first time it's happened near or at a school is laughable. And it's just as silly to think that this incident would be the reason for the law, not the thousands of other times where people have actually been killed, or in some cases where kid heroes turn into villains. This is actually mentioned in the book when Captain Marvel is asked about two former protégés becoming evil control freaks like her, and she's like, yeah, well, you know. What makes the outlawed idea even harder to buy is that Civil War 1 and 2 just happened in Marvel's sliding timescale. They would have happened at best 3 or 4 years ago, with just a few months, maybe a year apart. So they've already passed and rescinded legislation penalizing people for having powers. They've also set up and ended the Avengers Initiative program meant to train kids with powers. This literally just happened in their timeline. It makes no sense for people to then turn around and do it again, all while pretending not to remember that all the stuff just happened. But that's basically what happens in the story. Kamala's law is passed and the government creates Cradle, or Child Hero Reconnaissance and Disruption Law Enforcement. These are basically people hunting down child heroes, imprisoning them in black sites and re-educating them. And we're supposed to believe people like Steve Rogers would just go along with this. We're two issues into Champions and so far no major heroes have shown up questioning this at all. Now keep in mind that as this is going on, the craziness with X-Men is also happening. So here you have a government that is snatching up mutant heroes and Xavier and Magneto say nothing about it. I mean, Justice shows up. He's from the New Warriors, he's a mutant with telekinetic powers, and he accidentally killed his abusive father using those powers. He was arrested and jailed and freed and became a hero again. 
He's also working for the U.S. government, which defies everything in Hickman's Plantman story arc, and he's hunted down other mutants and handed them over to the U.S. government to be brainwashed, something Xavier and Magneto would never allow. You know, back in the day, Marvel would have made it clear that this either happened before or after whatever Hickman's doing, or they would have scrapped the idea so there wouldn't be this massive contradiction. The entire concept makes no sense in the current Marvel Universe, and in context to itself, it also defies logic. The government knows that the new Wasp was trained as a child soldier. Whether or not they think she needs to be monitored, it would be pretty clear that she's got the training to do what she does, and that it'd be a really bad idea to capture her and brainwash her, either because it wouldn't work or would be super traumatizing. And again, why would the real Wasp allow this to happen? Where's Spider-Man? Where's Captain America outside of the cameo in the one-shot? Where are all the people who fought against this very thing just a few years ago? Everyone is just going along with this in a very unbelievable way. And then we get to the worst part. Viv Vision, who's been missing after the incident, is the one selling out the team when they get captured by Cradle. It's so out of character, it's like Jeff Johns riding Teen Titans. The kids bickering with each other is consistent, but the rest of it is all over the place. For example, Ruby Williams decides to chill out for me and Einhard and doesn't want to work on anything, but she loans out Natalie, the AI remnant of her best friend, to help the kids out on the run. That makes no sense. Then Kamala Khan is just out of the hospital and suited up again without any clear explanation of how long she's been out of commission or why they just let her back on the team now that they have questions about her loyalty to them after she decided to make a statement without their permission. So now the team distrusts her because she wasn't there when they had to fight. Now the trick for this confrontation scene to work would be that the team doesn't know each other's identities. Except I'm pretty sure several of them know each other's real names. So this doesn't make any sense. In the scene where Riri confronts Ms. Marvel about not being in a battle, because she was busy saving the activists, Riri calls Nova by his real name, Sam. So if that's the case, and she could potentially know Kamala is Ms. Marvel, wouldn't Riri know that the girl was buried under the school during the fight and that's why she wasn't there? And if they don't know who each other are, shouldn't that be clearer in the story? Riri makes a point about everyone knowing who she is because of her connections with Iron Man, but that creates a new problem. See, they can circumvent this law by teaming up with a mentor. Basically find the person whose name you stole and say you're working with them and you're good. But no, they don't want to do that. Yes, I know that sounds retarded because all of them literally did this weeks ago in their timeline as part of Marvel Generations in Legacy. And several of them like Miles, Riri, Wasp, Ms. Marvel, and Nova, basically all of them, already have connections to established heroes who train them or can vouch for them. I mean, technically Nova is a space cop. Just call a nigga up and be like, can you vouch for me? The whole storyline doesn't make any sense. I mean, the Young Avengers are still a thing in the middle of this. They're teen heroes, what about them? There's no reason for this event to happen, and it doesn't look like it's having any real impact on the Marvel U outside of Champions. It's just pointless. As if Eve Ewing heard about Civil War and said, What if it happened to kids? Did you read Civil War? Scratch that. Did you read the Wikipedia page for Civil War? It's been done. It was lame then, and you're just making it lamer. Just write a damn team book. Nobody's buying champions to begin with. I think this was just a thing Mark Way wanted to do with Humberto Ramos. It doesn't seem to have any other purpose and hasn't gained much of a following. This would be an easy book to sell to a young audience if you put someone like Kim Jacinto on the art and got a writer who told really cool action-based stories and peppered it with the usual shonen-esque battle manga motif. I don't know how many times people need to see that formula laid out in intricate detail before they realize they should just do it. The shonen battle manga style works so well you can turn stories about making food, growing up in an orphanage, and rebuilding civilizations into bestsellers. Meanwhile, Marvel is putting teen heroes into cradles. It's like they're allergic to good ideas. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.